Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and as you probably know I'm Boeing 737 captain and this is our Q&A video number three. Q&A means questions and answers, answers and questions. So don't hesitate, ask me your question. What do you want to know from airline pilot and nowadays also from general aviation pilot because I fly Boeings and also I start to fly the general aviation aircraft. The rules are like this. You asked me your question just now in the comment section below and you will get your answer in next video. So this is video number three and you have your answer in video number four. So ask me a question. Bum, bum. And now I will answer the questions from the previous video. I hope you understood how it works. So Saham Malik asks me, my favorite approach is ILS approach, but what use? Uh, this is my question for you. Okay, there are several types of approaches that you can expect that you can perform flying, for example, Boeing 737. The simplest, I think, is ILS approach because you don't need to do anything, just press the button and the flight director system will guide your airplane for landing. Very simple, actually. For, let's say, LNAV VNAV approach, RMP approach, or RNAV approach, you need to set the different altitude in the proper time, so you need to get ready. To speak about the more complicated stuff, like with, uh, the approach without the vertical guidance, where you need to adjust the vertical speeds, well, it's more complicated for the pilots, but nothing special there. Also, I like visual approaches. It is one of my favorite because here you it is like in general aviation so where you see the runway you can figure your aircraft for approach and landing in the solar raid and do it more in manual stuff and also visually so as I say to you like in general aviation same as flying small aircraft but here you fly the big aircraft also have some of the limitations to perform that type of approach the visual approach you don't need to exceed the high banks that's for the passenger comforts and of course to get away from the st high stall speed so my favorite eyeless approach if it is congested area if you have many of the aircraft crowded airspace in some big airport like Charles de Gaulle or something and I also like visual approaches if there are few planes on approach, so I'd like to fly the visual approach as well. So I like Alice and visual. The next question from Xine UIIB Dean. Sorry, my friends, I may spell your names incorrectly. Sorry about it. What are the duties of person as airline captain? Well, actually, captain takes the responsibility of safe transportation. The safe transportation of passengers, cargo, mail from one point to other, from point A to point B. And actually, every, all the duties are coming from this part. So I'm responsible for the final fuel figures, for the final fuel that I think will be safe for our flight. I'm responsible to analyze the weather information before my flight. I'm responsible to calculate, uh, to check the weight and balance or recalculate it if I think it's wrong. I'm responsible basically for everything. Even though the pilot flying may be the first officer and he or she does something wrong on landing, maybe hard landing, I will be responsible for that. So we need one person who is responsible for uh, safe flight. So before each flight I need to check lots of information. I need to check even my uh, co-workers to check their uh, insurances, licenses, that everything is current. Then we go to the airplane. I need to check the technical uh, state of the airplane and then I need to check many other stuff my friends. So basically the captain is responsible for most of the things happening to the airplane. And also you, I have the final responsibility to begin the evacuation, for example, to start the evacuation, or the final responsibility to reject the takeoff or continue the takeoff. So in this crucial situation, the, comp the captain is responsible for airplane and for the flight safety. Bum, bum. 
a question from Tino Tinda Mandisvidza. Uh, then do pilots know then to extend the flaps? Well, actually, the flaps are made to decelerate the airplane to maintain the same lift force uh, component during your approach and landing. Because for approach and landing, you need lower speeds compared to your horizontal flight. Uh, because if you have the same speed as for a horizontal flight, the runways would be very, very long for your safe landing. So you need to decelerate and you maintain the same lift by extending the curve, extending the flaps, increasing the wing curve and the wing surface. So just before the approach, uh, for example, uh, before the intercepting the glide slope, you should in Boeing 737 you should be at flaps five. If you are at flaps zero, so flaps are up, you will start to accelerate. The speed will start to accelerate with a standard three degrees glide slope. So just before reaching glide slope, you extend the flaps five. So first one, then flaps five, then then you're on a glide. Uh, at around five miles, you may extend well before reaching five miles um, till the touchdown you extend uh, the flaps uh, 15 so gear down flaps 15 then flaps 30 and all the time you decelerate the airplane uh, so the cruise speed of yours or at the same altitude will be like 250 knots and your landing speed as usual is 155 or 160 knots for heavy heavier airplane if we speak about the general aviation aircraft that I also fly, I usually extend the flaps on the base leg. So on the base leg, I extend the flaps for the first position, it's flaps 15, for a Technam that I fly, the Technam is Italian made airplane, and then I'm on the final, I extend the flaps full. So that's the idea. All right, the next one. Adil Pardip asked me the question, what range of feet per minute is counted as hard landing. So usually during your approach, if you're maintaining speed, gr the ground speed of 160, let's say 160 knots, your vertical speed should be around 815 uh, feet per minute. So it's average uh, vertical speed for your approach. But before landing, of course, you need to flare, you need to reduce this large amount of feet per minute that you have the vertical speed. It's for the three degrees glide slope, by the way. If your glide slope is higher, your vertical speed will be much higher. And you need to decelerate it down to 200. Uh, if it's more, than 300 feet per minute, it could be the hard landing. But actually we have the G meters installed in our aircrafts and where you can see after the landing on some airplanes, you may see actually the G force that was at the moment of the touchdown. A question from Sagar Buyel. Captain, the walk around is done after each sector in a regular four sector day or it's done in the beginning of the day only. Actually, according to our rules, we need to perform the walk around before each flight and after each landing because we need to check the airplane for possible bird strikes. We need to check the wheels and probably the brake temperature you may also feel it and you may check also where it's the smoke coming from the wheels because if they're very very hot you may spot the smoke coming so yes after before each flight and in the middle between the sectors you need to check the airplane if you have authorized uh, maintenance staff they may perform the walk around for you that was the case that I was flying in Garuda, Indonesia. In my previous airline, we had the maintenance staff in every airport, even in the most uh, small ones. So I was just basically sitting in the cockpit and the maintenance personnel did this, uh, the walk around for me. Pam, pam. Very interesting nickname here. Jruv Jain, the Yuk Boy Music. That's the nickname. How do you make an airplane efficient? More efficient, I think. Well, basically, there are some of the stuff that you can do as pilot to make the airplane more efficient. For example, during the initial climb phase, you may perform uh, that noise abandonment procedure. You can decelerate also the engine thrust 
and at the same at the certain altitude you need to like retract the flaps and not continue your climb with the flaps that will uh, the less drag you have also from the flaps uh, the more efficient your flight will be also the same for approach if you land if you approach with flaps 30 you'll create much less drag than approaching with flaps full with flaps 40. So the 30 flaps is better for efficiency. Also we may taxi using only one engine so after the landing we usually wait up to three minutes then we shut down one of the engines and then continue the taxi on single engine. And also we may delay the time of starting the auxiliary power unit. The auxiliary power unit you start before reaching the gate if the ground power is not available so you just start the auxiliary power unit you set it online on electrical buses and then you shut down the engines so the later you'll do you'll do this starting of the auxiliary power unit the better is for fuel efficiency and of course it is better to perform the efficient descent than your thrust levers are always at idle and you accelerate the thrust you increase the thrust only after you extend the flaps and select the gear down so it's b best way for your descent but it's sometimes it's not not possible due to crowded air spaces in for example in Charles de Gaulle or Heathrow Airport or Gatwick or sometimes here in Borispol Airport. So if you are alone and you are landing, just press L enough, V enough, and then continue the descent using the most efficient profile calculated by the computer, the flight management computer. Very interesting nickname. This guy is always commenting under most of my videos. Thank you very much for that. The nickname airliner world boeing 777-9x very interesting nickname so the question is what is your favorite fighter jet my favorite military jet is f-16 fighting falcon falcon well i think f-16 is also nice i also like uh, soviet made jets and modern jets as well i like f-35 it's nice but i like them as airplanes i am not really into military aviation my friends because i consider the military uh, the military stuff actually the same with the guns you know um, they are used to kill someone so those planes used to kill someone so it's not for me i would like to see uh, aviation more in more peaceful way in commercial aviation and general aviation but as for the airplanes if we're speaking not about the purpose of the military jets but about their look the performance i really like them and probably f-35 is my favorite the next question from bishop 51807 do you think it's still worth it for people like me to go into flight training mid covid crisis i think it is because then you finish your training the crisis is over it will be over for sure in a couple of years so now we'll have vaccine maybe even in this year in 2020 and for sure many people will get that vaccination in 2021 you may support it or not but most of the people will get it and that is why the total number of cases of covid cases will reduce and the crisis will be over so some of the people will get the immune system after they got the disease some of the people will have this vaccines so totally will manage this crisis and the aviation will rise up again yes we are struggling right now and possible probably will have pilot layoffs and now we have pilot layoffs around the world but that situation will change in a couple of years and in five years for sure the global aviation will need many pilots believe me my friends will they will need a lot of pilots bum, bum. Adil Paradeep again asked me the question by the way my friends you may ask as many questions as possible under this video in particular so before we had a rule only two questions for passes but I received not so many questions in general not from many of you my friends you are my subscribers so 
ask me as many questions as possible under this video so Adil Pardeep asked me one more question thanks for your reply really happy about question what is the difference between single channel in the yellow and green on Boeing 737 actually the yellow color that you see maybe on a flight simulator is actually called the amber so it's like between an with a yellow and orange or something so we call it amber and we have amber single channel on our uh, primary flight display right on the bottom of uh, FMA flight man mode and the theater then you intercept the localizer for the eyeless approach if you have only single autopilot if you have both autopilots on you'll have the CMD green so there is no any single channel green indication on the amber indication and if you have single channel uh, ILS approach the amber single channel will illuminate during your entire approach hey my friends are you tired no place your question in the comment section the next one here from random stuff random stuff is actually the name the nickname of this guy he asked me hey captain a question that confuses me almost every time i watch a cockpit landing video during final approach why does pilot flying keep hold on a yoke and move it then the autopilot is connected and why the autopilot doesn't disconnect then the yoke is moved actually on boeing 737 uh, thank you by the way for your question random stuff very interesting one actually the pilot not only moves the ailerons and elevator on the Boeing 737 it also moves the yoke because the yoke is connected with these airfoils of course through hydraulic system but it it has mechanical linkage so the control column and the yoke is moved by autopilot and basically pilots place their hand on the yoke just to make sure that it's moved to understand where the autopilot moves the airfoils it's unlike in air bars where you have the side stick it's not moving in these different positions then the autopilot is on but on Boeing 737 we have it like this and if something will go wrong with autopilot I can quickly react and my hand is on the yoke itself so the out the airplane itself will not make the abrupt maneuvers uh, then I'll have to grab the yoke very fast if my hand uh, would not have been on the uh, yoke before so I hope you understand sorry about my English my friends sometimes it's terrible but I think it's understandable Vlad Mali hi I hope you're doing well thank you Vlad I'm doing more or less fine uh, I hope you're doing well as well. My question is about a logbook. I know that's a place where pilots can calculate their flight hours, but who writes it? Do pilots must write there something after each flight or it's a job of airline department? And how it's done in general aviation during the first steps into your career? Thank you. Thank you for your question a lot. Actually, it doesn't matter in general aviation or whether it's general aviation or commercial aviation you need to log each flight of yours whether it's a hard copy of logbook or whether you purchase the software in Apple Store or Google Pay you may also purchase it uh, you need to log each flight and after some period let's say every three months you put your logbook in comparison with the airline you put it to airline department and then they compare their flight hours with yours what you logged and then they press the stamp they put the stamp and chief pilot signs your logbook so the things are like this let's move to the next one from tina Liu. are you allowed to land on a military airport if it was an emergency if it is an emergency last time i seen airplane emergency landing in the military airport they investigated and pilots got put in the jail for no reason but the airplane landed in the military airport one wing cut a boeing 737 wing off and caused it to crash but that time noticed what happened they say that this didn't happen in australia that in brazil i think so quite hard for understand everyone has different level of english i'm not speaking that i'm good in english but for me it's it was quite difficult to understand this uh, comment 
but I think I know what uh, Tino Liu is talking about. There was the investigation video about the business jet, uh, it seems for me, Embraer. Uh, they collided with the Boeing 737 in Brazilian airspace and uh, the business jet, it cut the wing of the Boeing with its wing tip. So uh, it lost the winglet, the part of the wing and the business jet safely landed in a military airport. Yes, if you don't have any, any kind of other airports, if you have an emergency situation, you need to land in a military airport. Doesn't matter, you need to save the airplane. Uh, they didn't know about what had happened, so they arrested the crew, but it was just temporary, you know, for a couple of days. I got arrested in Indonesia landing in military airport. It's not totally military, but it's the common use, like commercial military airport. The mili it was also the military base, but it's also used as commercial. And to fly there as expat pilot, I needed to have the special permission. But in Garuda, they didn't give it to me. And no one knew that I was supposed to have it. So after me landing, I don't remember the airport itself, maybe Pankalabun or something. So I got arrested. First they sought to arrest me in a local camp, local military camp. But later on, after negotiation, they arrested me. It was like a home arrest in a hotel for three long days. And after I was questioned about my whether I have uh, military experience here in Ukraine or something, and I was granted with this permission in a three days to fly in the military airport. They apologized about my arrest, but it was the case for me. So I got arrested in a hotel for landing, not in a full military airport, but this was the common base for commercial and military. By the way, it was not an emergency landing. It was a regular flight there. Pum, pum. The next question from Sam Ratch. Is there a possibility to fly the Boeing 737 without using autopilot and autothrottle for a short flight? And have you ever flew without autopilot and autothrottle? And does airline allow their pilots to fly without autopilot for short flight? Thank you for your question, Samuraj. Well, actually, the policy for Boeing 737, if, if you disengage the autopilot, if it's totally working, if you disengage it, you need also to disengage the auto throttle. They will never work like separately, you know. You may no, you may select the autopilot and uh, fly it without the auto throttle, but you cannot fly it uh, without autopilot with auto throttle on. That's the normal thing. Uh, there are some exceptions for non-normal situations, but for normal flight, if you have autopilot and operative disengage the auto throttle so do not select it for flight you are not allowed to go to reduced vertical separation minimum airspace rbsm airspace uh, so yes you fly on short haul flights because of that because if you fly at let's say at flight level 250-260 without reaching the rbsm airspace so your fuel consumption will be much greater. So that's why it's only for short flights. And yes, I flew like that just once. But you have, if you have the auto throttle just not working, you may select the autopilot on. And in that case, you fly almost without restrictions. I say almost because in that case, you cannot perform the auto land. So you need the auto throttle for auto land on Boeing 737. A question from Evgeny Kovalenko. Evgeny, please, next time write your question in English. Let's be, you know, open for our international society and you are making me to translate the Russian into English. Just right now, so I'm, I should read and translate. Not very useful for me. Okay, last time I'm reading a Russian comments, right, my, my friends? Because we are open for worldwide community and the worldwide language is English. That is why I'm speaking English, okay? I'm not speaking Russian and I want, I estimate you to write your questions in English, if possible. I know Russian, but uh, please in English. Dennis, it's interesting for me how the things are in uh, your airline with manual flying. 
uh, including flying without flight directors. Uh, and I think, uh, oh, is it allowed in your airline and how often do you fly, mm, do you allow it to fly for your first services? Flying without flight directors is only allowed if there is instructor on board, according to my airline rules. Because you need to use all the uh, information possible, and flight directors are crucial information. They will give you uh, your uh, way how you fly the airplane relative to your pitch and your role. It's very crucial information based on whether it's uh, the flight director system on, whether it's uh, FMS providing the signal for flight directors. So it's uh, information that will increase the safety of your flight. And we are not flying alone, we are flying with passengers. So only with instructor you have the right to fly without flight directors. It happens very rare because of the reasons I say to you. Well, you can fly the visual approach without flight directors, all right? Then you see the runway, you see the, sh the landing threshold, you just call like uh, recycle flight directors and you, they disappear. You fly manually, you see the runway. For ILS and for other approaches, it's not common practice in my airline and not only in my airline. And the last question for today from Jruv Jain, the Yuk Boy Music. It's his second question. I understood about your point in retiring big aircraft, but any concerns about the air traffic? How can we manage that? Well, he says about if we'll get rid of Boeing 747s, the Airbus S380s uh, will have, will need more uh, airplanes flying around to transport the same amount of uh, payload, I mean the passengers, cargo and everything, and that will create the problems for air traffic control. So that was the point of his question. But uh, the 747s and Airbus 380s are not very efficient compared, let's say, with the Airbus 350s and Boeing 777X. If you compare the Airbus 380 with Boeing, you'll see that the payload for Airbus is just a few tons higher compared to Boeing. But Airbus has four engines, it's much heavier, and Boeing has two modern, efficient, high bypass ratio engines. And that will also create more room for airlines to fly. Because the Airbus 380 may not fly in many of airports. It's too big. That is why we'll see more 777s flying around, more Airbus 350s, because they are very efficient. And they actually can carry the, almost the same amount of payload. But there is the other side or maybe different story about it. Because you may see the concepts of new airplanes from Boeing and from Airbus is a little bit different compared in a single aisle a middle range aircraft. You will see the bigger aircraft coming from these factories. You may also see the bigger Airbus A321 XLR or something. Or, and also we see the good concept, the new concept of Boeing 797, which will become the size of Boeing 757. So we have more passengers per aircraft in this single aisle class, let's say. So we will have smaller number of people, of passengers flying on long haul airplanes, but greater number of passengers flying on middle range single aisle airplanes. I think it's all for today, my friends. There are no any more questions. Please ask your question in the comment section below. I say again, ask your question. But also, I know you are awesome. Every one of you are awesome. And that is why you need to do the very, very simple procedure. Just follow the awesome guy checklist. First, you need just to like this video, then subscribe to my channel. And only after that, ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time
Pam, pam.